Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. So last week, side effects released Houdini 17, and what amazes me most about Houdini is the sheer amount of new features they include in every release. The question whether Houdini is the best 3D app or not is a fundamentally wrong one, as every 3D software has its pros and cons, but certainly the mindset and the direction they are headed is a very good indication that Houdini might be the future. Now let's quickly recap some of the most important new features in Houdini 17. I will link the video from the Houdini 17 launch presentation if you want to get more into it. So the headline future of this release is Vellum. Vellum is a fast unified solver for cloth, hair, soft bodies and grains. Using Vellum you can create simulations that incorporate all of these effects for creating unique results. You see they have this holistic vision for Vellum. It's an underlying unified solver that incorporates almost everything. Uh, when they started developing Vellum, it was only for cloth and then they realized the underlying tech is so good that can be used for other fields like hair, soft bodies and grains. And the result is the incredible Vellum. I mean, feast your eyes on these sample videos from SideFX, uh, really phenomenal stuff. Uh, the next one is Material Based Destruction, which is a new framework for destruction effects in Houdini. Uh, this makes it easier to set up and art direct destruction shots by providing tools for pre-fracturing materials such as concrete, glass and wood, while automatically building constraint networks that tie the whole system together. So now you can tell Houdini, hey, this is glass or wood that I want to break and Houdini will give you real world fracturing patterns and how those fractured parts would try to stick together. There is so much more that goes into it. You can check out the launch presentation video from the link in the description. Next there is Whitewater Fluid Solver which has been rewritten to achieve a more organic foamy look with realistic cellular patterns and repellent forces and a more accurate relationship to the source flipsim. So now basically the white water particles are not in their own separate world, they do interact with other particles and forces. The next feature is pyro effects sourcing and retiming. Now Houdini can use OpenVDB as a pyro effects source providing a more efficient and flexible solution that makes it easier to create the right look for your fire and smoke. And retime is a powerful tool for stretching out or slowing down fluid sims, uh, RBD sims and volumes as well. Uh, with effective interpolation and blend options for creating clean results. So you don't have to reseam a, let's say, three-day seam to get it to be faster or slower. You can use the new retiming tool to make it happen in a few minutes. The next big one is regarding terrain, which now includes advanced erosion tools with more control over details, such as fluvial lines, river banks and debris and new hierarchical scattering for more efficient placement of elements into landscapes. They have this new interactive modeling future set which includes a new polydraw tool which lets you use interactive topobel tools anywhere in your scene, uh, new geometry alignment tools, a new Python framework for building interactive viewport tools and so much more. Uh, we have a new fully procedural UV workflow that starts with automated seaming, then moves on to accurate flattening and super efficient layout of the resulting UVs. Uh, character animation and rigging has been improved in Houdini 17 as well with a newly designed timeline that supports a more animator-friendly keyframe workflow, pose space deformation and facial auto-rigging tools for a complete top to bottom auto-rigging solution. Houdini Engine is now available for 3ds Max as well, so you can build tools in Houdini and use them inside of 3ds Max. And the list goes on and on with new features in Crowd Tools, new ready-to-use Game Dev Shelf Tools, NVIDIA Optics, the Noiser in Mantra, and so much more. 
So Houdini is clearly ahead of the curve and looks like to be the future. On the other hand, Cinema 4D R20 wasn't that bad actually. It has this new genius uh, volume modeling, this new uh, holistic approach with the inclusion of fields which can be very fun and useful to combine fall-offs and creating more advanced motion graphics. And after so many years of outcries from the users, we finally have the node-based materials. But isn't Cinema 4D one of the last major 3D apps to include this? Most of the rest of the herd have had it for close to a decade now. So let's not be overexcited about this one. That's what I'm saying here. But fields and volume modeling are actually pretty phenomenal. We can probably have another video to review Cinema 4D R20 new features and take a look at them more in depth. But for now, let me know what do you think about Houdini 17 and do you think that Houdini is ahead of the curve or not? Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest CGI tutorials and news. As always, visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, Maya, Arnold, V-Ray, Corona, Maxwell and motion graphic courses. See you in the next video.